We continue with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is, uh, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. You have a Cranberry hymnal. It's hymn 596, hymn 596. And if you have a green hymnal, it's hymn 293. Again, a Cranberry hymnal 596, green hymnal 293. And uh, we have uh, four verses. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Are there children on the call this morning? Oh. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Where are you all today? At home. You're at home. Oh, it's so good to see you. Do we have anyone else? Well, yes, I see you, Kylie. <laughs> um, so I have a question. What do you all call your dad? Dad. Dad, what else? Do you have any other names for him? Daddy. 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 Tim, yes, his, his actual first name is Tim. Um, so you call him Dad uh, or Daddy. Is he a good dad? Mm -hmm. He is. What he makes is him, a good dad. He is a good dad. What makes him a good dad? He plays baseball with me. Mm -hmm. He plays baseball. What else? What makes him a good dad? Uh, at bedtime, he reads whatever book I want to read with him if it's not too late. Oh, that's good. What, 
A any other things that make him a really good dad? Kind of good dad. Yeah. Great dad. That he makes me food. He he makes you food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, does he, he makes like... good hot dogs on the grill. Oh, yum! Can I come over to your house sometime for a hot dog? <laughs> good, good. And I'm guessing uh, he's probably um, pretty trustworthy too. Like you can trust him. Yeah. And he's there for you when you need it or when you have a, a boo-boo when you fall down and hurt yourself? Is he there for you? Yeah. And his name is Dad or, or Daddy. Um, today, we are going to read in our lesson uh, a word uh, called um, Abba, A-B-B-A. -B -B -A. And our, our good friend Paul, the one who wrote the letter, says that we can call dad, we can call God Abba or Father. And translated, that word means dad or, or daddy. So all of the good things that you like about your dad, the fact that he plays with you, the fact that he makes uh, good food, the fact that you can trust him. Uh, those also are things that we can be thankful that God is. And just as close as you are to your daddy, we can call God dad or daddy too, because he's that close to us and he cares that much for us. I know you guys uh, pray regularly because we pray uh, every week together. Um, and you can think of God as, uh, as a dad or daddy. And we're going to hear that in our lesson today. So I'm so glad uh, that you're here. Have you had a good week? Yeah. Yeah. What was yeah. the... What was the what was the best part of your week? I went swimming every day this week. Oh wow! And how about you, Kylie? Yeah. You too. I went swimming too. Oh wow! And that was perfect because of how hot it is this week, huh? Yeah. Did you stay nice and cool? Mm hmm. All right. Well, it is so good to see you. And what can we pray for today? Yes, I see your tongue. Could you put it back in your mouth? Thank you. you want to pray for, Jack? What would you like to pray for? No more coronavirus. No more coronavirus. What else would you like to pray for? Kylie, see your nice weather. Nice weather. Nice weather. I bet you guys want to go swimming this week again, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Anything else? That would be good to pray for. Go swimming, go swimming with friends. Okay, yes, go swimming with friends. So let's pray. Dear Dad. Dear Dad. Thanks for loving us. Thanks for loving us. Thank you for the thanks nice weather. Thanks for loving us. Yep, thanks, thanks for, for the nice for weather. weather. Thanks for the nice weather. We pray for an end to coronavirus. We pray for an end to coronavirus. Be with us as we swim this week. Be with us as we swim this week. Remind us always that you are close. Remind us that we are close. That's all for now. That's all for now. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah. Oh, is that a is that a wave? Thank you. Thanks. And every you're waving to everyone in the church, and they're all waving back to you. 
All right. Uh, we continue uh, with our first lesson today. The first lesson is from the 44th chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. For who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Here ends the first reading. And our second reading today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 25. Good morning, everyone. Romans chapter 8, 12 to 25. So then, brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh, to live of the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit you are habitually putting to death the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall genuinely live forever. For, for bleh, sorry, excuse me. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slate, but you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption in which we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are the children of God. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us, and in us, and for us, and conferred on us. For even the whole creation, all of nature waits expectantly and longs earnestly, earnestly for God's sons to be made known. For the creation, nature was subjected to frailty, not because of some intentional fault on its part, but by the will of him who so subjected it with the hope that nature, creation itself, will be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption into the glorious freedom of God's children. We know that the whole creation has been moaning together in the pains of labor until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves too, who have and enjoy the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait for the redemption of our days, our adoption. For in this hope we are saved, but hope which is seen is not hope. For how can we hope for what he already sees? But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, we wait for it with patience and composure. Here ends the lesson. Our gospel is Matthew 13, 24 to 30, and 36 to 43. Matthew 13, 24 to 30, and then 36 to 43. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put together 
before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Verse 36. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of God's dominion. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his dominion all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the dominion of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the midst of summer travel, whether uh, you all are staying close by or going far away, um, there is one constant, especially if you are traveling with little ones. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? How much further? How much longer? Can we please hurry up? Even if uh, the kids aren't saying it, sometimes the adults are thinking it. Because we want to be there right now. We want our vacation to start, bring on the waves and the sand and the surf or the mountains and the tents or the new place we are visiting. Maybe it's grandma and grandpa's for a week, but grandma and grandpa have new toys and new things that we're not used to and we're so excited to see them. Yes, indeed. Patience is hard. We all are having to exhibit quite a bit of patience these days. We want whatever is going on to be over. Why can't we go back to school or worship indoors why isn't our beloved Mifflin YMCA open? Man, we are getting impatient. This is hard. And in the midst of that, we hear words from Paul. For in hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope for what hopes for what is seen. 
For if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The root of the word patience is not calm or serenity or think of um, the most kind of chill person you know. That is not the root of the word patience. The root of the word patience is actually long suffering. Long suffering. Built into it, built into the word patience is this expectation that it is hard and difficult that being patience involves some sort of suffering. Any of you who have ever had a delay on a flight and are stuck at a gate for hours on end without a kiosk to grab some food, or you have that dilemma of do I take my bags with me to the restroom or do I leave them here at the gate with a kind stranger while I go and take care of things? You know a little bit about patience, long suffering. And the history of God's people is filled with patience. After all, God made a promise with Abraham all those years ago that said, you will be the father of many nations. Not now, not next week, not even a generation from now, but generations upon generations. God's people waited patiently while they were slaves to Pharaoh until Moses and Moses and God led them across the sea of reeds on dry land. And then and only then was their journey just the beginning. After all, they wandered for decades in the wilderness. Sometimes praising God, sometimes grumbling along the way. God gave them the law and they built a calf. God gave them faithful people and they insisted on kings and judges. God sent them into exile for a hundred years and then they came back and they waited and they waited for the savior of the world. This is not new to us, my friends. But in the words of Paul, patience takes on another character. Because with patience, there is hope. For in hope, we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope, or ho who hopes for what is seen? We have hope. We know that just as God has provided for us in the past, God will continue to provide for us. And the hope that we have is the hope in the power and witness in Jesus Christ, that Christ has conquered the power of sin, death, and the devil, and set us free to serve our neighbor. We have hope in the fact that we can call upon God the way a child calls upon a loving, caring, and faithful father that the Spirit prays with us as we pray, that we have not been left abandoned. 
and we place our hope not in the things of rulers, but in the one who has conquered the power of death. And we look forward to the day when all of creation will be redeemed. And until then, weeds and wheat grow together. We understand that our ultimate place is in the commonwealth of God's kingdom. And that all of this patience and waiting means that we have stuff to do in the meantime. We can pray for one another. We can pray with confidence and hope that God hears us. We know that God is with us in our highest highs and our lowest lows. And we cling to the promise that we are heirs of Christ. That because we've been joined with him in our baptisms, we are held fast. And so that any suffering that we might be experiencing will one day give way to glory. Are we there yet? Is it time? How much further? I don't know. But I know this, that God is with us, that God hasn't abandoned us, that we can cry Abba, Father, and we will be heard. And we have hope in the power of Jesus. For the gift of the summer and for the death and resurrection of Jesus, for the questions of children and the whole company of heaven and earth gathered together in worship, we say together, thanks be to God. Announcements this morning. You may have seen in our weekly update that at our council meeting a week ago, the leadership of St. John's, we are going to try outdoor worship. Next week at 10 a.m. in front of the parish house. Bring your own lawn chair and mask and know that uh, masks are required except uh, when seated. Uh, we will have a, a table with bulletins and communion elements. Um, we'll also have a place for you to put your regular offering and your joyful noise offering. The church building, so where we're currently recording worship, uh, will remain closed. Um, and we hope to still be able to broadcast via Zoom. So if you uh, are not able or feel comfortable joining us uh, next week, this will still be available via Zoom. So we're gonna try it next Sunday and then two weeks from now on August the 9th. Uh, so if you come on August the 2nd, uh, Enjoy God's creation, but we will not be having uh, outdoor worship that day. So to make this all happen, because we have a couple of uh, large canopies that we're going to set up in the front yard of the parish house, 
we're going to need some help to get them staked and set up. So Saturday, the 25th at 10 a.m., uh, come uh, to the front yard of the parish house, uh, in front of the parish house, and help us uh, set up canopies and tables and, and make sure that we know uh, where we're going and what we're doing. Um, so I wanted to let you all know that. Um, we have been thinking about this for a couple of weeks. We did not leave you uh, orphaned, but this wasn't a decision that we wanted to enter into at the spur of the moment. So we have been uh, planning and thinking for a couple of weeks at this point. And so also invite uh, your friends and neighbors uh, who might uh, be missing their own faith community. In our prayers today, uh, we hold uh, Alan Sylvester, uh, who tested positive uh, for COVID. Um, he is recovering at home, and his uh, contact information is on the screen, or you can call the church office for it as well. We also have some wonderful news to share about a new grandbaby that was born. Uh, last week, uh, we shared that Ron and Lori Bush uh, had a grandson, and Kathy and Randy Davis are not to be outdone either. Uh, they had a son, uh, Levi Miles, sorry, they had a grandson, not a son. They had a grandson, Levi Miles Davis, born on Monday. Are there any other uh, announcements today for the good of our community? Please unmute yourself. I have a new great-grandson whose name is Ernest Matthew Eccles. Thank you to the 40 households who are joining us today as well as your continued financial giving. Uh, it's making a difference and I will give you an update uh, next week as soon as I know how many folks came to our, the food pantry distribution yesterday. Our response this morning for the prayers, uh, I will say, teach us your way. And the, the response is, you are full of compassion. So teach us your way. You are full of compassion. Confident of God's care for us in the midst of the world's sufferings, we join together in the power of the Spirit to, to pray for the church the earth, the world, and all who are in need. God of the church, we praise you for sowing the good seed of the gospel throughout the world. And we mourn that at this time, many Christians cannot assemble to nurture one another for growth in the faith. Tend your people. Support bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders. Give us strength through your word. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the earth, we praise you for a wondrous creation, and we mourn for the ways we take advantage of it. Nurture our green spaces. Send rain when there is drought. Be with us in the heat. Show us how to care for all you have made. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the nations, we praise you for the good that has been given us in this country, and we mourn that many people here are poor and dispossessed, that violence often breaks out in our land. Lead us to form communities where all people are equal and valued equitably and disputes are settled without violence. Bring an end to warfare around the world 
and mend the torn fabric of humanity with your truth and mercy. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of all, we praise you wherever health and happiness prevail, and we mourn that many people suffer. Open our hearts to your children who suffer in any way, especially Rachel, Shirley, Betty, Marlene, Hilda, Joan, Donald, Carol, Fern, Fern, Niall, Nancy, Alan, Wynn and Hank, Barbara, Mark, and those we name before you now. Oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the seasons, we praise you for summertime. And we mourn that this year many hopes and expectations are denied. Give relief to those who suffer from the heat. Protect travelers from infection. Guard our children. Give rest to those with no vacation time hope to those who are unemployed, and patience to all who must endure. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God, you are Abba, our loving Father. You are our, so you are our sovereign of our lives, our Redeemer, the rock on which we build. Hear us as we offer the petitions of our own hearts. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of eternity, we praise you for all who have died in the faith. We mourn our beloved dead, especially Dave and Alice. At the end, bring us all into the shining light of your presence. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn today is uh, O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. As Mitchell begins to share it, I, I wanted to let you know that if you are using our green hymnal, a Lutheran book of worship, uh, the verses might be different, um, uh, especially uh, perhaps the fourth and fifth one. But this version in our Cranberry hymnal, uh, hymn number 886 in our Cranberry hymnal has six verses. And in our green hymnal, hymn 221, two, uh, it's 221. Two, okay, so again, it's 886 in our cranberry hymnal and 221 two, in our green one.